Hello, good morning and thanks for joining in today and watching my educational videos. Uh, today I'm going to talk about splenectomy. As you know, in this uh, season we were talking about the spleen. So we started with the structure and the functions of the spleen. In the second video we talked about splenomegaly, which is enlarged spleen and what were the usual causes of enlarged spleen and the symptoms we get from it and also the treatment for it. In the third video, we compared the enlarged spleen with a condition called hypersplenism, in which the spleen is overactive. So if you're unsure about any of these conditions, because all these conditions will be discussed in today's video, but just superficially, not very deeply. So if you're unsure about what those conditions are, please watch my previous videos or any of the related video. Today, we are talking about surgical removal of the spleen, which is called splenectomy. Today I'm not going to talk about every condition in which a spleen might need to be removed. I'm going to talk about three or four most important conditions in which the spleen has to be removed. I'm discussing these conditions based on my personal experience, the causes for which I personally have removed patient's spleens. And I'm sure most surgeons will agree that these few causes that I'm going to discuss today are the commonest causes for which the spleen may require to be surgically removed. So there are two main surgical approaches of removing someone's spleen. One is laparoscopic, which most of you know is keyhole operation. So removing someone's spleen using a keyhole procedure is called laparoscopic splenectomy. The second way of removing someone's spleen is open operation, which means a cut on the tummy, old-fashioned incision on the tummy. Now we're going to briefly discuss each of them. So I've drawn a little diagram over here to briefly show what a surgeon does during keyhole operation. So as I discussed in my previous uh, video on spleen, where the spleen is, so this is, this is somebody's abdomen or tummy. That is the right side of the rib cage, and that's the left margin of the rib cage. As I discussed before, the spleen sits tucked underneath the left side of our rib cage, so you cannot feel a normal size spleen. This is the umbilicus or the belly button. And the surgeon makes three or four cuts. This is just an example. So might make a cut over here, might make a cut here, one more here, one more here. These are small little cuts between centimeter to half a centimeter in size. It depends on the surgeon's preference how many cuts they make and where do they make the cuts. And through these little incisions, they pass very long, narrow instruments like this stick. And with those instruments, they can manipulate the spleen, remove its blood vessels, whatever necessary, and then remove the spleen. And you might wonder, how do they remove the spleen, such a chunky structure over there? How will it come out of a little cut over there? So many surgeons, what they do, they just, the patient had a previous cut on the tummy, like for an appendix. They'll open up the same scar, which was done many, many years ago, and they take the spleen out of this cut, which is slightly bigger. Or if the patient had a smaller cut lower down, which is not very visible, and the surgeon can remove the spleen through this cut. The object of the exercise is that no ugly big cuts new cuts are made on the patient's abdomen. So the patient's recovery is much, much quicker and they can go home within a couple of days after having the operation if all goes well. So the second way of removing someone's spleen is an open splenectomy. Now both keyhole, which is laparoscopic splenectomy and open splenectomy are done under general anesthetic. In the case of open splenectomy, instead of four or five small little cuts on the tummy, either a midline cut is made, which is right in the middle of the tummy going up and down, or sometimes surgeons prefer to do a uh, oblique cut under the left side of the rib cage, and through which the spleen can be removed. Because of the size of the cut, obviously it is not very cosmetic, so you can see the scar much easier on the tummy. And also because of the cut, there's more pain 
after the operation. So the patient might have to stay in the hospital for extra days until the pain is well under control. So might be in the hospital for five to seven days if all goes well. So what are the different reasons for removing someone's spleen? Now, over the years, I've removed quite a few spleens, both with a keyhole and open operation. And these are the three or four conditions in which I can summarize all the causes for which I've been involved with removing the spleen. And I'm sure most surgeons will remove the spleen for this same reason or similar reasons. I've not put these in order of how common or uncommon they are because in some places ruptured spleen might be much more common as compared to hypersplenism. In other places hypersplenism might be more common as compared to ruptured spleen. Now what does the ruptured spleen mean? Ruptured spleen means any injury to the spleen and the commonest cause of injury to the spleen is falls or road traffic accidents. Because the spleen is hidden underneath our left side of the rib cage, it is quite well protected by our ribs in the front and our spine at the back. Please watch my video on the anatomy of the spleen. It will explain it to you a bit better where the spleen is. However, if somebody falls from a height or breaks the ribs on the left side, that can damage the spleen. And when the spleen gets damaged, as I discussed in my previous videos, spleen has a very rich blood supply. It is very, very vascular and it bleeds very heavily and very, very quickly. So many of these patients will require an emergency splenectomy. So, and the vast majority of these patients will have to undergo an open splenectomy. Why an open, not a keyhole operation? The reason is because surgeon hasn't got the time to do a keyhole operation. Keyhole operation takes more preparation. Keyhole operation is more time consuming as compared to an open operation. When the patient is bleeding in the abdomen from a ruptured spleen, then the surgeon's job is to go in there as quickly as possible and stop the bleeding. And the second problem is that sometimes ruptured spleen does not come on its own. Quite frequently, it will come with injury to other organs in the body, like the pancreas or the bowel or the liver or the kidney, because all these structures sit very next and very close to the spleen. And a road traffic accident or fall from a height or a crush injury can damage these other structures as well. And with an open operation, the surgeon has a much better chance of examining all other organs in the abdomen to make sure there is no damage to any other organ in the tummy and to sort it out there and then, which can be very difficult to do with a keyhole operation. The second cause I put down is surgical damage. Surgical damage I mean that if the patient is having an operation for some other problem, especially for the stomach problem because spleen sits next to the stomach and very closely attached to the stomach. Now my second organ is the pancreas. Spleen sits very close to the tail of the pancreas. As a matter of fact, tail of the pancreas is tucked inside the spleen. The third organ which is very close to the spleen is the left side of our colon. And any operation on any of these organs can damage the spleen. Vast majority of these, this damage to the spleen is only minor and with a little of Coagulation can be stopped. However, if the, if the spleen does not stop bleeding, at the time of these operations, the spleen might need to be removed for patient safety and patient's well-being. The third cause I've written down is hypersplenism. Hypersplenism, as I discussed before, is overactive spleen. Vast majority of these spleen that I have removed over the years have been mega spleens, which means they are very, very large spleens. Very large spleens, which are extending to almost filling up the whole tummy are very, very difficult to remove with a keyhole operation, if not impossible to remove with a keyhole and will require an open operation. There are certain conditions in which there are hypersplenism and a couple of conditions that come top of my head is idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura in which our platelets, which are cells in our blood which stops our bleeding, are being consumed by the spleen 
and autoimmune hemolytic anemia, a condition in which our red blood cells are being eaten up by the spleen. In both these conditions, the spleen is of normal size. It is not enlarged. And these two conditions, the spleen, if it has to be removed, then it can be done with a keyhole operation, far easier as compared to an open operation. So what preparation is required to remove someone's spleen? As I explained earlier, both keyhole operation and open operation is done under general anesthetic in a major hospital. What preparation is required? If it's an elective splenectomy, which means the patient is having his or her spleen removed for hypersplenism, then there is time to prepare the patient because the patient does not require an emergency operation but requires an operation in a few weeks or in a few months time which can be planned and which can be done during daytime hours by a proper team, by surgeons who are experienced in doing these operations. For these patients, most of them will require vaccination for certain types of infections and these infections predispose us to certain type of very serious pneumonias. These pneumonias in a normal person does not do much harm. However, in person who have the spleen removed, these can be life-threatening pneumonias or these can be life-threatening infections. So to protect these patients from future infection of this variety, they are vaccinated at least two, three weeks before the operation is performed. The second thing that is done for many of these patients, because as I discuss in my functions of the spleen video, that the spleen protects us against infections. And when the spleen is gone, we are predisposed to certain infections. And some of these are the pneumonias I just talked about. So one is vaccination to protect them. The second thing is many of them will require lifelong antibiotics. And if they are not allergic to penicillin, that will be penicillin to be taken for the rest of their lives. They are also given a card to keep on their person, which tells them that these patients had the spleen removed and they are very much predisposed to infections and the infections should be treated far more aggressively and early as compared to normal people because those infections can be life-threatening in these patients. In the case of an emergency splenectomy, that is the patient has come in with a ruptured spleen and is bleeding and might also have other injuries, there is no time for vaccination to be given two, three weeks before the operation because these operations cannot be planned. In these patients, once the spleen is removed as an emergency, usually with an open operation, then the patient will require antibiotics after the operation for the rest of their life. So these are the main reasons for having the spleen removed. Certainly my experience has been the same. I hope you did find this video informative. And if you did, then please remember to subscribe. And I will see you in the new season in which we talk about some other organ in the body. Thanks for watching. And until next time, see you soon. Take care.